Hello everyone. So um, last time we discussed um, we discussed how we can work with tuples um, in a way that we can store many different variables in one package, and we actually demonstrated that by inputting um, data from the keyboard about an item description, and we call this we stored it in a variable that we call the description. And then we also captured the price, um, sorry, price like that, uh, from an input function, and um, and the price here, price, um, price like that, and the description like that, and then we also entered the quantity. I apologize again. I'm not sure why I keep making these mistakes today. Input not only today, obviously. I understand quantity like that and um, what we did at the end of the day we actually gotten an item and we populated this item which we call now tuple we know the name of this guy we, we populated it by the pieces of information that we captured individually um, from the keyboard and we can demonstrate that by entering the description here and potato chips is our favorite potato chips our favorite example and the price is 2.99 um, the quantity is 3 and um, because I did not I did not do anything with the item here um, we could actually print it here item um, like that like this and if I run it I see that the same values that I entered um, from the keyboard and uh, I was able to capture them. So now if I want to have five items, if I want to go to the store and buy five, buy five items, then you might wanna be thinking, okay, if I, if I need for, for every one of those items um, to repeat these things, uh, so I, for every item that I need, I might, I might think about repeating these guys five times here. Um, two, three, four, five. If you are thinking this way, you might want to review some of the videos that we discussed on how we can utilize the code that we're writing and how we can be efficient and how we can use um, mechanisms or constructs that allow us to repeat things without having to uh, literally repeat, and repeat them um, programmatically by typing them. So let me see, let me just go here and I want to delete. Oops. So I want to delete all these guys like that. And now what I really want to do is to oops again. What I really want to do is to repeat these guy using the for loop for um, I don't know for a number in a range of zero and maybe three because I don't want to be repeating things unnecessarily like that so if I do this then I'm going to um, let me comment this out so I can get rid of all the things that we're seeing here so we see blank all right now I'm going to uncomment and I'm gonna run this three different times I'm gonna run it once so I can get three different items um, so the first item is potato chips and the price is $2.99 the quantity is 2 and then another description is chips and salsa and the price is four fifty, and the quantity is 1 and then the third item that I want to buy is I don't know peanuts maybe ginger ale ginger ale six pack say for eight ninety nine I don't know must be a really good quality if it's that expensive and I'm only gonna get one six pack um, now if I want to print the three uh, the three um, elements that I entered from the keyboard from the item don't be surprised but we're only capturing the last element we only capturing that last element. 
So clearly the data that we entered about the chips and salsa and potato chips that made, made, made us hungry right now is lost. So we, we are missing something really fundamentally significant here. That every time we loop, we assign a new value to the same variable here. So we are supposed to be, before if I want to utilize this guy, um, and I want to have, um, say, a basket when I go to the shopping, when I go to the, um, um, the grocery store, and I want to have a basket full of items, then I really need to add these items to the shopping cart or to the, to the basket. So is there a way that I can do this and store these items that are now comprised of three different uh, bits of information? Um, yes, indeed. Um, there is something that is the scope of what we are learning today. Um, so our shopping cart can be represented as a, uh, as a Python as a Python list, and the list a list is a Python data structure. that allows us to do exactly that. To store more than one item in it, like this. How do I, how do I start going to the store with an empty shopping cart? Well, when you go to Amazon and you buy, you buy things over there, you never start with a with a shopping cart that is full. You always start with a shopping cart that is empty. So our empty shopping cart here is now going to be a Python list, and you've never seen this before, um, at least from my video lectures. Um, so you use a square bracket, uh, open and close. This shows you that we actually have an empty shopping cart. Now what we need to do, what we need to do, is to use that shopping cart right here. After we construct the item, we'll populate it with the description and the price and the quantity. What we need to do is to uh, put it on the shopping cart. We need to add it to that shopping cart so we don't lose it. Uh, because if, if we if we get it and we'll grab it and we, we read the description and the price and the quantity and we don't put it in the shopping cart, we did not, oops, uh, we did not do ourselves any good. So we need to use a function that's called append that is already built in um, as part of the shopping cart. So when I do this, um, now I'm going to add every item that I buy and I populate when I mean I buy here that I basically hypothetically buying. Um, so by appending it here, I'm going to eventually see it on the shopping, uh, uh, in the shopping cart. And uh, at the end of the day, um, well, let, let's run this first before we talk about the end of the day. So we need a potato chips item uh, for $2.99. And the quantity is, uh, what's the quantity? Three different pieces. And then uh, chips and salsa. The price is four fifty. The quantity is one. And the description is, what is the description for the third element? We said ginger ale, ginger ale, like that. And the six pack say 850. And we are going to buy just one. Now, now I populated this shopping cart. If I print this shopping cart now, print this shopping cart, and let me let me get rid of so I want I want to print the entire shopping cart, not the item. If I print it, then I get all the items, the three items as tuples separated by a comma, second tuple separated by a comma, third tuple separated by a comma. Is there any way that I can do this better, that I can print them better? Yes, indeed, I'm gonna use the four um, item for each item in the shopping cart. Now I could print this item here like that and then I can have a really nice message here item in the shopping cart 
like that. And if I run it, then I get all the three items that I stored in the shopping cart. Um, suppose now I don't want, um, suppose I don't want a specific, um, I, 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 I don't wanna, I don't wanna print the entire um, item details. I just wanna know the description. Um, say, I, I, wanna, I wanna know the description for instance. Um, so the description here happens to be in the first index. Um, so I'm just gonna print the items in my shopping cart by their own description. So now I don't need to see all the remaining parts. Um, suppose now, suppose I want to list the items that are more than $5. So I'm going to say, if this item here at index now, as you can see, we can use the index, okay, at index one. And remember, we enter this as a string from the keyboard. So I'm going to convert it into a float. If the price here is greater than, oops, is greater than $5, then I want to print, I want to print the item and the description. Wait just a minute, we, okay. So I wanna cut this and then I wanna paste it here. Very good. So now I want to see the item and I want to see the price of the item. Um, so item in a shopping cart and the price, item price, price like that. And we realize also that the price is at index one, like that. So this is going to show me the items that are greater than um, $5. And the only thing that I see above $5 is my ginger ale here. If I did everything correctly, I'm only gonna see that last item here. Indeed, it says um, your shopping cart has ginger ale and the price of that ginger ale is $5. So now, as you can see, we're able to store items in the shopping cart. And, um, and we, we were able to um, loop over the items in the shopping cart and we are able to do some interesting stuff like, um, can, can you show me the items that are more expensive than others, for instance. Um, I want to show you another interesting thing. Say that you you do not want um, you buy you don't want any item that is above uh, five dollars in your shopping cart because it's expensive. So you might want to delete this item. You want to remove it from your shopping cart. So there is a built-in function in the in the uh, in the Python list that's called remove, like that, and if I call it here and then I send the item because now I'm iterating and this is the item that has a value that's greater than $5. And if I apply, if I pass this item and I apply the remove function against the shopping cart, I should be able to get rid of this item here. And if I run this like that, um, well, clearly these are, this, these are the data that I'm presenting, that I'm pr printing before removing. But now let me show you if we can, um, if the shopping cart, um, okay. If, if the length of the shopping cart is more than, is three or not. Let's see the length of the shopping cart. Well, we had three items. So we can, if we remove an item here, then we're supposed to get two items. That's a really good indication. Now let's take a look if this shopping cart has the ginger ale or not. So how do I do that? Well, let's see. Um, for item in shopping cart, I want to print all the elements and see what elements that I have. Item here has a description at index zero. Um, and if I run this, then I only see the potato chips and I only see the chips and salsa. I got rid of the item that was expensive in my shopping cart. Um, I think uh, I think this is a really good demonstration of using lists in conjunction with um, with uh, with tuples, and um, I think we should we should uh, we should just celebrate the the knowledge that we uh, that we learned today and make it um, make it uh, make it a night. 
Um, and then we will continue um, next time. But make sure if you have any questions or have any comments, please make sure you write them down for me on the video or you shoot me an email. Thanks for watching.